What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Now today, I went through all these Pokemon that were cut from the National Dex, and I, I was thinking to myself, in honor of Pokemon Day being this week, and in honor of a lot of people believing that in some way or another, these Pokemon will be allowed into Generation 8 at some point, whether it be through Diamond and Pearl remakes, some second game to the Sword and Shield entries, or even uh, a final update to the game, they will at some point likely be allowed into Generation 8 and thus be allowed to Dynamax. I want to go over which Pokemon I believe are going to be the best Dynamax users out of these Pokemon. Now, if you think that I missed one, do me a favor, comment down below right now which Pokemon you believe will be an amazing Dynamax Pokemon and why. I'd like a full essay, double spaced, uh, times new Roman 12 font. All of that is completely necessary, but... <laughs> Uh, regardless, if you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like and hit subscribe to the channel on turn notifications because I bring you daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. And let's go ahead and get into it. Also, we have a couple more days left on my 20,000 subscriber merch thing. Basically, you know, until the 27th, you'll be allowed to uh, buy this merch and support the channel. It's all very stylish, but let's get into it. So, uh, as you can see, all of my picks are right here. I'm, I'm going to be going through why I think these Pokemon will be amazing in the format. Uh, and uh, the order is, you know, kind of whatever, but I kind of put them in order of escalating power and why I think they'll be amazing in Dynamax format. So yeah, first off, we have Empoleon. Now, Empoleon does have ability or the ability Defiant, which is why I put it on this list. While normally the ability Defiant on Empoleon wasn't always amazing, some people just preferred special support with like Icy Wind and stuff, or even just a general special attack, or maybe slapping a Salt Vest on it, because it is really bulky. The Water Steel typing in Dynamax format, the ability to double this thing's HP makes it really difficult to knock out, since Water and Steel only have a couple of weaknesses in Ground and Fighting, so it is a very difficult Pokemon to deal with. You could even run a Bulldoze mon next to it under trick room uh not only giving it its weakness policy but also lowering its speed uh and on top of that it would be very difficult to intimidate we all know incineroar is one of the best intimidators in the format and it also doesn't like facing down a water type like empoleon while also giving it plus one in attack from the intimidate while it does have really lame options in steel moves, as you can see, uh, the extent of its steel moves uh, that are physical are going to be Metal Claw and Steel Wing. Flash Cannon isn't really ideal for a physical set. Uh, we're we're going to want to go Steel Wing for that uh, purpose. It will be able to boost its defenses with Max Steel Spike. On top of that, it'll be able to boost its special defense with Max Quake, which is an option it has coming off of Earthquake. It might get high horsepower. I really doubt it, though. I don't think flippers are great for emulating horse movements. Uh, but... Regardless of the fact, it's not very easy to intimidate this Pokemon. On top of that, when it's Dynamax, it's super bulky. Access to Liquidation makes it a really nice Incineroar check, and it's just able to hit a lot of things really, really uh, strongly with that okay physical attack of 86. If you double that or even get a Defiant boost, it'll be a lot scarier. But yeah, uh, Empoleon, I would say, is the lowest on this list because of its middling stats, but beyond that, it actually wouldn't be a terrible Pokemon in Dynamax format. Next up, we have Electros. Now, I feel like Electros is going to be pretty much just a special attacker in Dynamax format, uh, and that's because of its insane coverage and its amazing ability and type combination. Electric only has one weakness, and that is ground typing. With Levitate, it isn't able to be hit by any ground moves unless Gravity is active or Weezing's uh, Neutralizing Gas is active. It does have amazing coverage on the special side. If we actually go ahead and take a look at Electros' special move pool, it has Discharge, Dragon Pulse, Flamethrower, Flash Cannon, Giga Drain, the Thunderbolt, uh, has a couple of more useless moves like Round and Hyper Beam, but regardless, that is very impressive coverage, being able to hit Electric, Dragon, Fire, Steel, Grass, it's, it's all very, very diverse, so that allows it to do a lot of really cool things. Uh, basically, I feel like in Dynamax it'd be really solid, because you can either just let it be a general... Uh, nuisance by running an Assault Vest Acid Spray set, which does lower their special defense by two stages. Uh, but having access to that poison move is really huge because you're able to Dynamax and turn it into a Max Ooze and just hit things for whatever they're weak to. Dragon Pulse as a Dynamax move also lowers the opponent's uh, attack stats, so under Trick Room, like an Assault Vest Electros would actually be pretty terrifying to face down. Uh, it has no weaknesses and it has double the HP it usually has along with a 1.5 boost to its special defense. And amazing coverage means that nothing's really safe against it. Kartana won't be able to one-shot it if it's Dynamax. It'll get one shot back with Flamethrower. Ferrothorn doesn't like taking this thing down. Incineroar doesn't do much to it, especially when this thing can just spam max lightnings at it. Uh, you'd have to get, you'd have to hit it with the Snarl pretty much. But yeah, I feel like Electros is really solid and that's why I put it at the number two slot. Next up is a personal favorite of mine and one that actually has a couple of options in the format. So Honchkrow is a really strong Pokemon in 
older singles formats. I remember I ran it in UU and like Gen 6, uh, but that's because of its ability Moxie. Now, we all saw what Gyarados could do in previous formats where it was able to run Moxie, Max Airstream coming off a of bounce. Now, what if Gyarados had a dual typing of Dark and Flying? Now, Honchkrow has the ability Moxie, which means that if it gets a KO with a Max Airstream, not only does it get a speed boost, but it, it gets an attack boost as well. So you can run something like Max Airstream Brave Bird, uh, and it also has decent coverage with Super Power and Sucker Punch. So it's just like a really powerful Pokemon. Being able to steamroll through the opponent makes it really terrifying. And on top of that, something we've learned as we played through this game, the higher the HP a Pokemon has, the stronger of a Dynamax option it is. You can go ahead and look through all the previous Dynamax Pokemon that weren't things like Cinderace that have low HP but are just really fast and offensive. Things with high HP benefit more from Dynamax because it doubles their already high HP stat. Honchkrow having base 100 is really big, and while you don't have to necessarily double the HP stat or max out the HP stat, uh, having high HP means that you can actually just take advantage of that Dynamax HP boost by in like just increasing the defenses with EVs, increasing the special defense, whatever. It only needs 124 within Adamant Nature to outspeed Dragapult at plus 2. And on top of that, being a dark typing means that Honchkrow isn't capable of being burned by Prankster Will-O-Wisp, or even being able to be taunted or anything that is prankster related. No fake tears, nothing on this thing. That's actually really solid for Honchkrow. Oh, and also can't be Thunderwave by Grimmsnarl. That's another thing in its favor. It doesn't like facing Grimmsnarl because of the fairy typing, but beyond that, uh, nothing really wants to take a life orb boosted max airstream. But the other option you could go with is something a little bit cheesy that we saw in previous formats with Togekiss. You could even go with a super luck scope lens set saying, hey man, I don't really care about that Intimidate you just landed on me. In fact, I'm going to do absurd damage with this max airstream 50% of the time. 50% crits is really dumb, and <laughs> we know that with uh, Togekiss. And while Togekiss is probably a better crit user because of the fact that it is a special attacker, you'd have to snarl it to benefit on the turns that it doesn't have crits. Um, where Honchkrow, you can intimidate pretty easily, and then half the time it won't be doing much damage, but the other half the time it's doing absurd damage. Uh, I'd say Honchkrow is going to be a really solid Pokemon in that sense. Now, number four is going to be Slacking, and I put it next to Regigigas for comparison. They actually have very similar stats, which is funny because Regigigas is a legendary and Slacking is just a regular Pokemon with a bad ability. So what do they have in common? Uh, they have 160 attack and 100 speed, meaning that they hit for the exact same damage uh, and also are at the exact same speed tier. However, Regigigas opts for more all around bulk with 110 HP, 110 defense, and 110 special defense, where Slacking actually has uh, more physical bulk in particular with uh, 100 defense and 150 HP and lower special defense with only 65. But I feel like the doubling of HP with Dynamax and the 150 HP overall having 40 more over Regigigas is actually a pretty solid thing uh, in Slacking's favor because you do have the option to Assault Vest it, making it just extremely bulky on that side. But I feel like most people will opt for the uh, Life Orb set since it's only weak to fighting moves and there aren't very many fighting special attackers. So you're probably fine just going with this thing. I feel like Slacking is just going to be a slightly better or even just an optional other Regigigas. And here's why. Um, Slacking, 50% of the time, is able to attack, and that's because Truant uh, is going to be deactivated, or Truant is going to be active uh, the other 50% of the time, meaning that it skips every turn, it only is able to attack uh, every other turn. So it doesn't have, like, the inherent weakness that Regigigas has, where it has half speed and half attack every single turn for the first five turns, unless Weezing's on the field. You could use Slacking Weezing instead, because with Truant active, you can actually have certain turns where your Weezing doesn't have to be on the field for for the Slacking to be absurdly powerful. I almost said Regigigas there. <laughs> but on certain turns, you can just switch out the Weezing, and it's like, yeah, Truant comes back, but this isn't the turn that it matters. We're going to have to look at how these two abilities interact with each other uh, once this Pokemon is allowed in Generation 8 at some point, because for all we know, it could be, yeah, uh, Truant goes away, and for the turn that Truant's gone, or for the turn that uh, Truant comes back, it's able to attack, and then the next turn it's not able to, or maybe it keeps track of the turn, so if the first time Truant was active, you're able to attack, the next time Truant comes back, you won't be able to. We have to figure out how the mechanics work. It'll definitely be a really cool thing to experiment with, but I feel like Slacking might actually be better than Regigigas for that reason, and that's why I put it at number five. It's going to be really terrifying, especially if uh, Pokemon like Weezing are allowed in the next game, or whatever game Slacking is available in. And the final Pokemon I have on this list, probably the most overall powerful Pokemon, is going to be Greninja. You could make an argument for slacking, I suppose, but I feel like Greninja is really solid. Uh, the ability Protean is pretty much the exact same thing as Libero for anyone who had not played previous generations. 
Greninja and Cinderace pretty much have the exact same ability. However, Greninja has different coverage than Cinderace. Uh, Greninja is able to go for a physical set if you wanted to, but I could also see a special set. I feel like you'd want to go physical a lot of the time because the difference in power isn't too much with 95 attack and 103 special attack. Um, and also you get access to physical flying moves like bounce uh, or even acrobatics or aerial ace. I believe it gets all three of those. So being able to go for max airstream with stab is really cool. Uh, max flutterby, max Hailstorm, Max, uh, what is it called? Max Geyser. I mean, it doesn't really matter because it was always water type, uh, but it also has just other really good coverage moves, has access to fighting moves that are physical, it has access to physical rock moves, physical ghost moves, it has so many things that could go for it. Uh, however, on the special side, you could even opt to run a special Greninja, which is really scary in Dynamax format because they have to call it on lead. They have to say, is that a physical Greninja or is that a special Greninja? If it's physical Greninja, they have to be really careful and you know pack some speed control to make sure Max Airstream doesn't get out of control. But if it's a special Greninja, now they have to cover for Max Darkness into uh, a Max Hailstorm or a Max Overgrowth or even a Max Mindstorm. It has access to all these different things they could go for. And I'm relatively certain that in the next game, it will have other coverage moves, whether it be through tutors or uh, just general TMs. It could have access to ground moves for all we know. Maybe they'll give it like Earth Power or something. It's not likely, but... Uh, you have to consider those things when thinking about what the next game is going to be. Uh, just being able to run all these different things with Greninja is really scary. And we don't know if Battle Bond Greninja will ever return, but uh, I'd like to assume that most people would actually opt for Protean Greninja instead of Battle Bond. Since Battle Bond wasn't actually allowed in any previous VGC formats, it was sort of treated like a mythical Pokemon, if anything. So yeah. Uh, these are my top five Pokemon that I think would be absolutely insane in Dynamax format. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Did I miss anything? Uh, did I skip one of your favorites even though it's not that good? Just let me know in the comment section. I really appreciate that. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.